There we go. Uh, welcome to everybody. If you're watching this on video or otherwise, um, thanks for kind of joining us. We, we have a bunch of people online right now, and we'll answer their questions after this. But first off, I want to talk about what do you do? What do you eat before training? And what do you eat during training? And how does all of this affect your ability? Um, so basically, let me pull up a little quickie screen here just to show you an idea of some stuff. Now, where the heck did it go? It's, oh, wait a minute. Here we go. There we go. And, oh, when, ah, here we go. Now we're talking. So you can, probably can all see this increased heart rate slide, I'm assuming. Uh, right, good, okay. The point I'm about to make is as your heart rate goes up and up and up, your use of fat goes down and your use of glycogen goes up. Got it? Just like our little, little slide there. Um, so you're consuming, there, there are primarily two sources of resources for fuel that your body uses. And once again, as your heart rate goes up, you're using more carbohydrate in the form of glycogen. Um, carbohydrates become blood sugar, blood sugar becomes glycogen, or you know, carbs become blood glucose, blood glycogen, same thing. And then you, you, you become um, or blood sugar, and then you become it becomes glycogen. Um, so you're using that more and more and more at, as your heart rate goes up and less and less fat. As your heart rate goes down, you're using less glycogen from carbohydrate and more fat, got it, as resources for fuel. Now, here's the kicker for this whole thing. And I'm just going to get rid of all this. Well, I will hold it on for a minute. Your body has way more of a reservoir of fat as a resource for fuel. You've got everybody. I, I, I don't mean to be insulting. I mean, everyone, I don't care. The thinnest Kenyan on the planet has way more fat as a resource for, for fuel. Um, and then you do carbohydrate in the form of glycogen, right? Now you are constantly creating more glycogen. Glycogen is this honey-like substance that's kind of whitish and resides right in the muscle and it's ready to go into fuel because it's already in the muscle, right? Um, so you have way less glycogen. So here's the kicker. If you could choose, which you can, I'm about to explain, if you could choose which resource you'd work on more, fat or glycogen, knowing that fat is a way more abundant resource than glycogen, which one would you choose? The bigger resource to work on making it more efficient or the more limited resource, which you don't have that much of and make that more, re more efficient? Well, hopefully you choose the greater resource to make that more efficient because you got way more of it. And if you can use it at a higher heart rate, um, and more of it more efficiently, because you got more of it to begin with, doesn't that make more sense to train in a way where you're going to be more efficient using fat? Well, that's why we do all our workouts at low heart rate is because we are training our bodies to burn fat. Okay. So here's the thing for training and, 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 training and we'll get rid of that. There we go. Here's the thing for training and diet is basically, you know, you, you're not really going to be able to absorb a lot of fat during training, but you don't need to because you have a ton of it. So what we do is we just keep our heart rate low. So we're in that fat burning mode at low heart rate. Got it. That's why we do all our training that low heart rate. I already said that, but I'm kind of emphasizing it. Now, we do do speed work to raise the bar on where you're still using fat. 
where you're breathing pretty hard and you're really going on, this would be midweek work, it would be threshold work, especially it would be interval and repetition work or R pace, I pace or T pace. Midweek, you do those short and fast things. Mostly what those are designed to do is yes, engage faster muscles, but also raise the bar on your heart rate where you're still using fat. And that's really what so much of your training is about. And yes, you do utilize, you develop certain things to utilize fat as a resource physiologically from training at low heart rate. You know, you don't get those physiological changes to utilize fat more efficiently at higher heart rate, only at lower heart rate. So more reason to train at low heart rate and make sure that you're training at low heart rate. Got it. Um, now, in terms of diet and fuel or resource for fuel in training or racing. So in the morning, yeah, you do want to kind of carbo up, right? For breakfast, uh, even a little bit the night before, you don't have to, you don't want to ever stuff yourself even the night before your marathon. You don't want to like eat a truckload of pasta and get in so much that in the morning you will be bloated and gassy and stuffed and you will feel like a lead weight in your stomach and completely unable to move, let alone do a marathon. Right. So that's that volume of carb loading is really bad. But, you know, having a little extra carbs the night before training, the night before marathon, it's not a bad idea because you're 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 generating more carbohydrate, which you will use, you know, as you go farther and farther and farther because of dehydration and fatigue, your heart rate is going to go up and up and up and up and up. So you do want to have some carbohydrate, a uh, fair volume in your system, uh, just to continue on and finish your training run or run, walk, or walk. Uh, I'm going to get into the differences between run, walk, walk, and run. Um, but the same concepts apply to all three. Um, so now during training, it's always good to take a gel with you just in case, you know, you went a little too fast, a little too far, or, you know, let's face it, after like three, four hours of just sitting at your desk and doing no movement, you, you get hungry. You know, your body does have a basal metabolic index where you're, you're constantly consuming calories. Um, that is your BMI. But, you know, being out there on the run, run, walk, or walk, you are consuming even more calories. So after a couple hours, you're going to get hungry. You're need you're going to need to take in something, um, like maybe a gel, maybe our blocks, or you know, mostly carbohydrate. But that said, early on, especially as best as you can, until you start feeling hungry, you know. You do want, you do benefit from everyone. You do benefit from not taking in carbohydrate on a training run um, too soon, too early. Um, so you can utilize, train your body to use more fat as a resource for fuel and make sure that you're running or run walking or walking at a low enough heart rate that you're still using a lot of fat and not a lot of glycogen, like that graph. You know, you, you want to be at that low, that high fat intake and that low glycogen intake, right? From lower heart rate. Got it from the, the graph that you saw earlier. So that said, to add to this, and I am not recommending this idea, but it is a kind of odd but used idea and it sort of works but it does prove an idea. There are some people out there who will run themselves a little faster until they burn out of glycogen. So their bodies will actually absorb, you develop a bigger reservoir of glycogen 
from hitting the wall. You know, hitting the wall means you've run out of glycogen or you've run so low on glycogen that your subconscious brain says, shut it down. You're, you've now hit the wall. You're too low on glycogen. We don't want you to completely run out. Actually, you don't really run out of glycogen. It's your sub subconscious mind says, stop. You know, you've now hit the wall. We're not going to let you get any lower on glycogen. That's what really happens. You don't fully run out of it ever. At any rate, your, your body has these governors that shut you down. All right, subconscious, unaware of you, to you. But you'll feel it. You'll feel, I have hit the wall. I cannot run or run, walk or walk fast, as fast as I've been doing. You'll feel like, oh my God, I just hit this wall. Uh, I, at any rate, that is an idea of how to raise your the the enlarge enlarge the enlarge the reservoir of glycogen that you you can absorb in your body at any given time. Um, but it's proof of the idea that you really really want to train your body in a way during during training that you're going to be yes using more fat but also you might even be able to expand that reservoir of glycogen a little, little bit, not that much. So take gels when you need them, avoid them when you can. Um, you know, I, and, you know, during, during a, a training, during a marathon, you can't really take in a lot of fat, but then you don't really need it. Um, you know, fat is generally um, heavier calorie count. It, it's more densely caloric, uh, shall we say, and it's more difficult to absorb. You know, you you can absorb carbs pretty quickly, but that's that's now we're talking about. Well, even training, um, you don't need to take in fat because you already have an abundant reservoir of it. And training long distance is usually all about low heart rate anyway. So you're using more fat anyway. So you're not going to run out of fat. You don't need to take, you know, eat nuts or, you know, somehow take in an avocado or whatever healthy forms of fat we eat. You don't need to drink olive oil. That would be crazy anyway, I think, but and probably taste weird. But you don't need fat. Those are healthy sources of fat. You don't need fat during training or even racing. Um, later on, like I said, for training, uh, you may need a gel good to take with you. Later on in training, we will have gels that will be used on the LA Marathon course, similar to what we did last year, the last few weeks with where, when we're really, really in high volume. Um, we will have the gels that will be on the course for the marathon. Um, during the marathon, you do want to start taking in gels right away because it's no longer about training, it's about doing, and you don't, you're you're gonna be depleting your glycogen reservoir a little bit, but you want to get that that sugar, those carbohydrates in the form of sugar, the form of gels, form of blocks, whatever. Um, you wanna get that in your bloodstream in the form of blood, sugar, blood glucose, but that's a whole other lecture. But that's the difference between training and racing. Racing, you wanna get those, those carbs in right away, um, starting right away, the same way you wanna get in water and hydration right away during training and racing, but training, getting carbs right away, training don't get carbs in right away does that make sense unless you're you're doing a short fast maybe maybe long fast run where you're going to need more carbs to get you through it but that's a whole different story now um right after your training you do have a 30 minute window where it's good, usually we'll have some bars, more and more we're, we're gonna start having bananas and stuff at the finish area. Cause you, you, know, you will become a little depleted in carbohydrate, especially when on the long, long distances. Um, it's right after a training run. It's great, you, like I said, you have this 30 minute window that where your body absorbs carbohydrate at an alarming rate. If you were to take a gel, just, you know, like you were sitting here, low heart rate during the day, 
you would find it would probably spike your insulin levels like eating a box of cookies. And if it didn't make you sick, it certainly would kind of crash your energy levels at least a little bit. But during running, during run walk or any kind of elevated or walk, any kind of elevated heart rate, you're, you're absorbing carbohydrate into blood sugar, blood glucose, and then into glycogen at an alarming rate. So that rate begins as soon that that rate begins to drop as soon as you stop, because then your heart rate's starting to come down. Now you still have about a 30, 45 minute, maybe even an hour window where you're still absorbing those carbohydrates at a pretty quick rate. So right after you finish, you really could take in a gel without, you know, causing your energy levels to crash. But um you know, right after uh, right after a, a run, a training run, it's great to have some healthy forms of fat, uh, some carbs, and protein because you've broken up. If, especially if, if you have soreness a couple hours later, you've broken up. That is indicative of you've broken up a lot of filaments that make up your muscle tissue. They're one hundred percent protein, so you intake protein to rebuild protein muscles. And muscles are protein, basically. And um, so right after your training run, uh, th that's a great time to do some carbs, some protein, maybe even a little bit of fat. And uh, so you feel, you feel full, right? You could even just have a good meal um, right, after, right after track. Um, so that's about it for my lecture. Um, does anyone have any questions about what I just said in training without carbohydrate, at least early on with, with shorter distances to, to develop a better fat burning system? Anybody, uh, any questions about that before I turn off the recording? Okay, going once, going twice. I'm going to stop the recording and any one of you watching the recording from home only and not online live. Thank you for watching. Everybody else, hang on. We'll answer all your general questions. But thanks for tuning in and good night or good morning, whatever. Oh, one last point I forgot to make. The difference between training for run, walk and walk is that your run walkers are doing about marathon race pace a little faster, a little slower, so that your heart rate may tend at times to be a little higher than marathon race pace, where runners are all that longer training is all lower than marathon race pace. So run walkers may have a greater tendency to need carbohydrate in the form of gels or blocks or whatever, later on in training before the runners would, okay? Walkers, it's the same thing where your range of training is now actually, actually faster than your marathon race pace. Marathon race pace is actually slower than your training. So walkers may actually need even more carbohydrate intake, you know, later in your walking and you're out there longer. So, you know, if you're out there for, you know, four hours, you're going to be hungry anyway. Um, so walkers especially are going to need a little more carbohydrate. That was the only little nuance to the three that I, I forgot to mention. That is it. I've gone on way too long on this topic. Um, I'm going to turn this one off again. Thanks to all of you watching for the recording and good night. And everybody will answer all your, your questions.